Yeah. Okay, I'm going to start you off with a, a little puzzle. Any mathematicians in the room? Okay, sorry. Um, I'm one as well. Um, right, look at this. Empty glasses. I have five glasses in a row. The first three are full, and the other two empty. How can I arrange them so that they are alternately full and empty by moving only one glass? Okay, so five five glasses, three full, two empty, take one of them, uh, and how can you only move one of them so that they're alternately full and empty? Yeah? You take the one um, in the middle of the full ones, uh -huh. and you put it, and you actually just tip the juice into the one at the end. Yeah, absolutely perfect. Um, I mean, it's it's a nice it's a nice wee straightforward straightforward example. Here is yeah, the answer. Take the middle glass, put it into the end one, and okay. So not really numeracy, but it's a nice wee start. Yes, yes, going. It's a more problem solving skill. Uh, my background is I'm a math teacher. So enhancing numeracy in a secondary classroom is pretty much what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. However, what I decided to do was, in light of curriculum for excellence and engaging the learners in a, an enjoyable and te technological rich environment, I decided that I was going to try and bring in something that was a wee bit exciting for them. Um, and to do that, I started researching. Uh, I, I'm kind of a, I'm an eye geek. Um, anything that's got an Apple logo on it, I pretty much like that also goes for all Beatles albums. Um, so that's, <laughs> that's, that's by the by. But I was reading an article in Macworld. Um, it was um, entitled An iPad for Every Child. And Cedar's, Pri uh, Cedar's Private School, junior, junior High School down in Greenock, uh, down the west of Scotland, actually researched bringing in an iPad for every one of their children. They're a junior high school, school that ranges from, sort of, they, they take kids from about P3 to P6. So it's a small school, I mean, they're only talking about a year group size, uh, if you think about the secondaries that we have. Um, and they looked at the, the iPod versus the iPad. They thought, right, if we could get iPods for each of them, what are the, the pros and the cons? And it was the, the iPad one that really got me. I'd seen it, I'd wanted it. I was trying to convince my wife, how could I get one in order to, you know, make sure that it wasn't just a waste of money. And I said, I know, I'll use it for work. <laughs> um, so, I, a year later of arm twisting, I'm figured, right, I'm coming up to my 30th, my 30th birthday, I know what I can get. So I, I, I found a deal that I actually got my iPad through Orange for next to nothing, so it was great. That was me convinced. I'm not even 30 yet, so I've got my 30th birthday present six months before. So it means if I, on my birthday, I'm just going to sit there with my um, But I, I realised that it was the best way that I could actually use it in a classroom environment. So this article got me going. And I thought, right, how can I adapt that? They were sort of saying the kids were coming back and saying how much they liked using the um, how much they liked using the technology. It was something different. It was more versatile. It was just a wee bit different from using a standard smartphone. And that is where I came up with my model. I thought, right, I'll use one iPad. I'll use mine as a lesson ender or opener. Um, uh, just a, use a math app, see how it looks, uh, just take it from there. I was thinking, right, curriculum for excellence, engagement, technology, doing all this kind of stuff. So engage the learners with an exciting piece of technology. I mean, everyone has seen the iPad, the, the iPhone, the iPod. They all love it. I mean, I was sitting with a, a bunch of kids. All of them had, you know, whether it was ranging from an, I, uh, uh, an iPod G1 up until the latest iPod with a front and face rear facing camera. They all had some sort of Apple product in front of them. Um, so it was something that they, they, they were excited about seeing and excited about using. And it does do things slightly differently from, from the smart board. From the, a smart board, you're limited to the software that's on the machine, whereas with the, the iPad, you're only limited to the, the, the apps on the app store. Not all of them work through the data projector, but what does work is perfect for what I was needing. But there are thousands, I mean, there's, there's close to 650,000 apps on the app store right now. And they have a massive section that is dedicated to education alone. Um, if you just put in iPad in education into any Google search bar, you will see the amount of apps that are out there, even on the Apple website. If you go into the iPad section, there's even apps from the App Store that has a full section on education. The amount of stuff that's getting developed for these things is unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. And that's where my sort of creative juices started to come in, if you like. So, the class. 
figured the best class to do this with would be a third year access to class. Low ability, various behaviour and, uh, and learning issues, very, very, the motivational skills of some of these boys, I mean, S3 boys in our, in our school at the moment are just, they're not badly behaved, they're just, you know, you're, you're basically having to light a firecracker to get them going for some of them. Um, but they love the use of ICT at any opportunity. In second year, we were getting them, you know, we were getting them down to the ICT suites. Any excuse to use technology, these kids would engage. Um, and games and puzzles, all of these different types of things, they love to use. Okay. So I thought, right, they're the perfect class to try it with. It couldn't have went any better. Um, I used this app called MathBold, which is basically a random quiz generator. Right? It is suitable for all ages from primary school up until higher maths. Um, because of the, the questions it can generate. It's got a random question generator. You can do anywhere from 10 to 150 questions. You can set time limits. You can put in pupil names. They've recently updated it. You can actually put in a whole class of pupils and actually have the data shared between each of them. So you can actually start having link tables to it. Started using it as a lesson opener. And the, you, know, you can see them all. They were doing the questions, but at the same time, they just trying to see what they were doing. And then I started to get them to use it. And I'll come to the more absent things, I'll come back to that just in a second. But in action, the kids actually started using it. So I just had my iPad hooked up to a data projector through a VGA cable. I've got the, the iPad projecting kit here, which is just a, a little attachment that goes onto the bottom. And the kids are sitting there. I mean, it's an access to the kid, and he's just working through some, some 10, 15 sort of addition questions, that just multiple choice. And it's just really, really enhancing his number bond skills and all of this type of stuff. Just hooked through easy to use, I'll take you around through it um, and just show you how easy it is to use, but they were absolutely loving it. Um, and their motivation went through them, you know, these kids were realising when they went into class they getting a chance to use this exciting piece of technology. And um, I was talking to some of them this week in light of giving this presentation and asking them, what is it about using the iPad or technology in class that you guys like? And they were saying, well, it's, it's not just book work. It's, you know, they were finding the, the book work very repetitive, very boring. I mean, maths classrooms really do have a, they really can be like that, you know, it is a case of give a 20 minute, 20 minute talk, show them how to do it, there's 15 examples, go off and do it. I mean, that is, that's been a maths class for years. You know, in light of curriculum for instance, we're trying to get active learning, engagement, a rich learning environment. And um, this was, this was really the tool that I, that I thought to do this. I mean, there's some other, there's some other apps that work as I just flip that. Some other apps that work as well. MathBold is one I've been using. Uh, Times Warp is quite a good one. That's a that's an iPod, iPhone, iPad app. It's cross-platform, um, and it's basically a game that encourages them to work through the times tables, and it goes through all the range of numbers, uh, different levels of progression. It's a very good app to use. Uh, GeoBoard uh, doesn't work through the projector, however, it's great for showing geometry shapes how we can start to manipulate things. So I've actually started using that with uh, some of my standard grade classes who are now working on things with the circle, so circumference, area, radius, diameter, pi, all of these different types of things all tied in. And it's different than just sort of, you know, me spending five, ten minutes drawing a picture on the board and then manipulating it, using the smart board to try and manipulate it as well. So the, the sort of the, the richness of it is, is really is really what I, was, what I was trying to convey here. And IMAPS is just your your sort of your maths reference. So that could be used for uh, elder people who are maybe going through their hires or the advanced hire where they need to know the squeeze upon squeeze of the formula and use. Um, other things that we've been doing, we've not just been using the iPads, um, we've started looking at Manga High. Um, Manga High has just recently become free for anyone to use. In terms of this being a, a, a worthwhile resource, this is probably the best resource online resource that I've come across. The maths games are absolutely phenomenal. This is a game called Sigma Prime and the geeks in the room will recognise that it looks like Missile Command. It's the old Missile Command game. You had to shoot different things as it came around, stop it and just create this loop. This does prime factorisation um, where you have prime numbers. All you can do is divide a number by the primes. So it's reinforcing their times tables. Um, but I had access three kids doing prime factorization of 11, 13, you know, really, really sort of high up, high, high order thinking skills for access three kids. And I've had them do prime factorization, which is absolutely tremendous. 
Um, another one that's more technology um, as opposed to it's simply maths is coding. Um, and we've started to look at myself and another teacher um, in the school, Marquee. We've started looking at a, a cross curriculum coding project between maths and the, um, the DIT faculty. We're looking at a, an S4 short course. Uh, Kodu is a free bit of software to put onto any PC or an Xbox 360. And what it is, is game design. You can, create a, you can create a very simple game that can be played on the Xbox or it can be played on PC. It's free for PCs or it's uh, five pounds, I think, for uh, if you've got an Xbox Live account or if you've got your Xbox Live accounts, you can, you can get it as well. It works either with the, the keyboard or it works with a, a, an Xbox controller that you get the USB one that you can plug into the computer. We're doing a, a kind of um, a, a cross project where they design a game using Kodu, they market it. They bring in the costs, they bring in, um, so in terms of the easy nose for, for my point of view for maths, it's looking at shape, position and movement and number uh, number, money and measure. So it's looking at those out of the easy nose in terms of um, how much it's going to cost, how much are they going to do before they have to bring in a profit. So it actually ties in a little bit, I believe you said you're in the uh, business yeah. Um, so um, it brings in a little bit of enterprise as well and they're going to working groups and actually come out, come out to us at the end with their game, what it looks like. They're actually even going to design a cover for it, I think. So a, a nice wee S4 short course that's going to do a wee bit of cross um, that's, that's really everything that I have. I've got some contact details there. Um, I'm on Twitter, it's mfoods81, or if you want to email me, it's mrfoods81 at gmail.com. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll happily answer any questions that you can have. Other than that, thank you very much. Yeah, it's not, I'm not a huge Apple fan, but I, well, user, but do you, could you just do it on a Mac? Like, I've got a laptop, could I just get apps on that and do it, pick up the projector, yeah, or does it have to be? Specific? You can do, yeah, you can. Um, but you can, I've created it all through the i created it all through the iPad, but you can do the same. Do the same but the, the apps that I use are specifically designed for iPad, iPhone, and Ford. Okay. So they are actually through the, 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 the iOS app store as opposed to the, 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 the app store that's for the latest okay. the latest version of the Mac OS. Yeah. Okay. Right. There, there's sure no the reason that you yeah, there, there, there will definitely have yeah. something that you can use. Um, yes. Just, just a, a suggestion though, yeah. something, if you're looking across curriculum wise and you're looking to maybe expand it as teach English, mm -hmm. and we do um, advertising units okay. within English, and I yeah. just think Sometimes it's quite difficult to engage the, you know, the, the lower end as you're yeah, talking about Actors Three. Right. I just think to do a still advertising unit in an English department would be brilliant for that. Yeah, just oh, maybe that's... something to, you know, if you if you're rolling it live and you're looking to stretch it. That's maybe something we we're, we're, we're actually struggling about how we can bring in, you know, we're looking to involve as many many sort of different curricular areas as we can. But that's that's something. Yeah, that's that's done too, and then okay. we can build it through screens. That's the uh, definitely something. Martin, following on from Helen, yeah. uh, you mentioned about the, the, the Kodu. The Kodu, yeah. Yes. The cross curricular. I didn't quite catch who, who were you cross curricular. Uh, it's between myself and uh, a computing teacher that we're doing. Yes, yes. Thanks, I didn't quite catch. No problem, sorry. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Thanks, Martin.